Ready? Good morning and welcome to Boxton United Methodist Church. We are so glad you came to worship with us this morning. Uh, we have just one big announcement that we want to share with you this week, and that is that our board met this past Tuesday night, and I wanted you to know that the reentry team is working really hard on getting things up and running so that we can have some folks who are ready uh, come into the sanctuary during the uh, colder months when the cold temperatures come and we will need, we are dedicated to leaving no one behind so we are getting an fm radio transmitter and so we will have a joint indoor outdoor worship and we are working on ways to unify that so that no one feels left out so good things are happening exciting things are happening for the fall and we're glad you came to worship with us today Let's prepare our hearts for worship as we join in today's call to worship, which was received from Liturgy Resources. God has given us breath to live and spirit to sing. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, and praise. And would you join in the opening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to give a big thank you to Linda Sturgis, who is acting not only as our organist today, but she's stepping in to help with some liturgy as well. And she and I have a little duet for you folks. It's called Magic Penny. Let's see. And Linda, we're going to be off and running very fast. Okay. Love is something if you give it away. something if you give it away you end up having more it's just like a magic penny hold it tight and you won't have any but land it spend it and you'll have so many they'll roll all over the floor for love is something is a fun little song by Malvina Reynolds. And I thank you, Linda, for jumping in there and playing with me. 
It's time now for our scriptures this morning, and we're starting with a beautiful passage from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 through 16. Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. This is the passage. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. There is a widow there who will supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day when the Lord sends rain on the land. So she went away and she did as Elijah had told her. There was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is a wonderful passage. And now we are having another wonderful passage, uh, the love chapter as we've come to know it. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 13 from St. Paul. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And now we are going to be blessed by some music by our senior choir, followed by some testimonies given by some members of our Wednesday morning Bible study group. So get ready to be blessed.
This is Marlene Howard. I've been a member here for I don't know how many years. I don't keep track, but I've enjoyed it here. I love the family, and if I don't have a chance to come here at all, then it's, it's a bad day. So I have two scriptures here that I will read off here. Uh, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 11, I guess. And the other one is, God's people faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Again, 2 uh, Chronicles, if I didn't say it before, it is now. Uh, 31, 12. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann. I've been coming here for about 20 years. It's like a home away from home, and it makes me feel peaceful. It makes me feel loving. I have made some very good friends here, and I don't know what I'd do without them. If I have a couple of uh, verses I'd like to ha read to you. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the grave. Proverbs 18.16. Here's another one. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynn, Lynn Gonyer. And uh, I've been a member of the church for many years and have come here since I was two years old. And I can truthfully tell you, the church just isn't a building. It is a family. And I feel that we all belong and that uh, we certainly do love each other. But to have a building, it does cost money to support it. And we do, if we want to be a part of family, we should want to also give. Um, the scripture that I chose from ones that passed ahead, Lynn had us to choose from is Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Again, Luke 6, 38. Thank you. I love you all. Good morning. This is Marie. I'm here to give you a little pep talk on giving. Ron and I and our family enjoy giving and doing and helping everybody. And we find the more we give, the more we get in return. So think about that. And I have a couple of scriptures to read. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And the other one that I chose is, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And that's Hebrews 13, 16. And I would just encourage you to think about giving of your time, your treasure, or talent that you may have. Thank you. Hi folks, I'm Linda, and I chose for a verse, uh, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have, 2 Corinthians 8, 12. And it points out, I think, uh, uh, an opportunity for us to give from what we have. Um, and we can't be expected to give what we don't have, but God will take our gift, no matter how small, and he'll, uh, he'll work with it and uh, bring it uh, into his glory. So thank you, and thank you for all your giving. Well, I want to thank our Bible study participants for their wonderful testimonies and scriptures. They did a beautiful job. And... Uh, at this time of year, we always dedicate at least some time in worship to stewardship. That's a Jeopardy word, I would say, for giving. 
I look forward every year to the testimonies that people give from within the body of our congregation. And I know you all do as well. I know because you've told me before how much it means to you to hear those testimonies. So thank you again to our Bible study members who were here and willing to give their testimony. It really does mean a lot. And as always, I have to follow that. Talk about a tough act to follow. <laughs> But my turn it is, and so I wanted my briefer than usual message to be about a biblical story that is near and dear to my heart. The story of the widow of Zarephath, who took a leap of faith, acted in hope, and gave all that she had to give. And right off the bat, I'm sure you notice that I have already used two of the three words that St. Paul wrote in his chapter on love. The closing words of 1 Corinthians 13, he said, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So our precious widow in this story has already reached out in hope, took a leap of faith, and this story really is about God's amazing love for her. So we have all three of those words in this today. Now you may be saying to yourselves by now, what? Where do you see that, Pastor Lynn? I didn't see the word in the passage from 1 Kings at all. There's no mention of love there. Well, no, it did not say the word love directly. But we were told that God instructed Elijah to go to this specific widow. And that, I believe, is because God already knew two things. First, that this widow was in dire straits and she needed help. She and her child were on the brink of death from starvation and she was in need of a miracle. God knew that and loved her enough to provide that miraculous intervention. Now, the second thing we know is that this widow, although she lived in Zarephath, which was the home stomping grounds of none other than Queen Jezebel herself, it was also the capital city of Baal worship, this particular widow knew that Elijah was the prophet of Israel, and in particular, that he had been a thorn in Ahab and Jezebel's side. She also must have, if not been a believer already, she was at least open-hearted toward the God of Israel. We never hear her mention Baal at all. And through her actions, she takes in Elijah and gives him the only food she has left to eat. Now, why did she do that? My goodness, can you grasp that? She had one meal left with a child to feed. But she trusted Elijah's word given to him by the God of Israel. Talk about faith. And in such an unlikely place, the capital city of Baal worship. Wow. People with hearts for God can be found in the most unlikely of places. But that, my friends, is a sermon for another day. Let's get back to our courageous, much loved by God, faith-filled, hope-inspired widow. She gave all that she had to give away. But she ended up having more. God was true to divine word as given to her from the mouth of Elijah. The flower never gave out, and the oil never ran dry until rain came to the land. Now, incidentally, we are all experiencing here in Maine a time of drought. It's been dry all summer here. We're at least seven inches low on rain, I think was the last I heard from weather reports. But that's nothing compared to this drought. This drought lasted two years. In two years time, not one drop 
of rain. And we don't know exactly when in that timeline Elijah came to her home. But we do know that it was fairly early on because Elijah had been living in caves being fed by ravens until the stream beds near the cave dried up from water. It was then that God told Elijah to go to the home of this particular widow. So it must have been at least a year or so that he had lived with she and her son. And in that time, verse 16 tells us that the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. The widow gave and she ended up having more and more and more and more and more. More food. More miracles as her son dies and Elijah prays for God to restore the child's life. I dare say, by the time the rain came, this woman received so much more than she ever possibly could have given. So precious flock, the testimony I want to share with you today is this. When we give, we give all that we are able to, to the God whom we love dearly. But the God who also loves us far deeper than we could ever comprehend. We give all that we can, but we end up having so much more given to us through the life of the church family of faith that we are a part of. So that we too, like the widow of Zarephath, we give, but we end up receiving more than we could possibly ever give. Oh, we give of our time, our talents, and our treasure. People mow lawns and shovel snow. There's no magical fairy that does it all. It's people within the body of the church. People take away the trash. They disinfect. Our Ron Adams prepares our communion for us and our Linda plays beautifully for us on the organ and the piano, something she's done here at this church since she was only about 14 years old. She could be playing at Carnegie Hall, but instead she plays and blesses us. Thanks be to God, we are so blessed. Some people handle other jobs of the church like Lorraine Lindstead who puts together our newsletter and we have folks who pay the bills and those who have been volunteering every single week at the food pantry, even in the midst of the pandemic. Did you realize that? It's true. Joanne Groder hasn't shut down at all, and every single Friday, the small crew of four shows up to unload and pick up and administer the food because all the other people who were on the list of volunteers they hit the road once the pandemic hit. And they were much younger, many of them, than the two faithful souls who have been giving out food every Friday in Buxton, keeping that ministry running. Our little church has been instrumental in feeding the many hungry people in Buxton throughout these tough times. That is no small thing, my friends. Another person who's worked hard, Sean, he's worked very hard getting the work finished inside the building that, you remember, was supposed to get done by mission teams, right? But then the pandemic hit. So Sean took it on with his family. Tricia worked tirelessly once we were able to get back into our building after the shutdown to open boxes and run loads in the dishwasher before putting away what little could be saved after the meth lab. And our Bible study group has taken on a half hour or so of work that is done spreading out throughout our church building and practicing social distancing. Every Wednesday, they've plugged away to finish anything that still needs to be done. We're getting there, one step at a time. And many hands makes light work. And I think I speak for that group when I say, 
that the, that the giving of the time and talent to do that work, we're all getting back more than we're giving from our church family. So as I have said every week since this pandemic began, we thank you all for the many ways in which you all have given this week from your time, your talent, and your treasure. We appreciate so much your faithfulness and we continue to take baby steps forward with great caution, making sure that we cause no harm and that we leave none of our sheep behind as we work toward re-entry into our building. This congregation has been through so much more than others. You are truly an inspiration to all, us all. You never give up and you keep moving forward. Like Dory the fish, we just keep on swimming. We may not be the only fish in the sea, but this school of fish from Buxton UMC is beloved by God. Just keep giving as you just keep swimming. And may you receive from our family of faith even more than you give. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord God, we are so thankful for the many, many ways you have been with us and guided us and have not left us alone through the many times of trials we have faced as a community of faith in the last year. Oh, Lord, we do want to get into our building again. It seems like it has been forever. For some, it has been months, but for our church, it's been nearly a year. Lord, help us to continue to get done what needs to be done. Lord, we pray that you will continue to touch our hearts, to give to you, because, Lord, we love you. You loved us first, and you gave so much, the gift of your Son, who died for us on the cross and rose from the grave that we might have eternal life with him and with you in heaven. Lord God, we just thank you. And because we love you so much, we give all that we can from our time, our talent, and our treasure. And you love us so much, Lord, that no matter what, you always give us back more than we ever could give you. Lord, we, we know that uh, as we are in the recorded worship this week, we do not know exactly what the prayer needs are within the life of our congregation, but Lord, we pray that your prevenient grace would move forth. For those who are sick, we ask for healing. For those who need encouragement, we pray, Lord God, that you would raise them up. For those who are grieving, Lord God, we pray your comfort. And we pray, Lord God, for unity among us all. And we pray, Lord God, for a vaccine to come soon for this pandemic. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the words of John Wesley, our founder, make all you can, save all you can, and give all that you can. Amen. And our final hymn today is Take My Life and Let It Be.
now hear these words from 2 Corinthians 9, 7 for our benediction. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God be with you all. Amen.